Today we're going to show you how to bring a ball of energy to life in Photoshop. Hey guys, welcome to Florent. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on Twitter at AKNacer. Today we're taking a really cool image. It was submitted by AP in last week's contest and he won a Flurn Pro for this image and we're editing it here on Flurn. This is a very cool image. Basically he cloned himself multiple times and he's got a light source that he's actually using uh, kind of like in a Street Fighter tactic, which Street Fighter is pretty cool with me. So <laughs> we're going to be showing you guys how to enhance this a little bit more. We're going to use some colors and create some light flares and some really, really cool effects. So let's go ahead and get into it. So here's our image. It's really cool. We have like a light glowing effect and basically this is going to be blinding everyone and maybe he's going to even be throwing it at uh, the person here. We have a like blue light coming as well. So we're going to kind of take some of these cues that are already in th this image with the blue light and kind of enhance them a little bit more. And to do that, it's actually really simple. We're going to grab an adjustment layer. I'm going to go up to hue slash saturation. Now, a lot of people edit this here in like the master slider where you can just kind of like change the hue saturation of, you know, everything. And that's totally cool. But you can actually get this quite a bit more refined. You can do so by going over here to your master. And let's say we're going to go down to our blue channel. Uh, sorry, it's not your blue channel, it's just your blues. And now we're, I'm going to choose the eyedropper and actually just choose around the blues that I want to edit. So now it's just saying, instead of saying like this is a general blue, we're going to edit actually this blue that we can see here. Okay, so from here I can kind of take it and change it around. And you can see it's not really affecting his skin tones or anything, it's just changing that blue. So I'm going to put maybe just a little bit of green in it and maybe we're going to bump up our saturation just to make this kind of like... Uh, you know, it really is a very bright glowing light orb. There we go. So pumping that up just a little bit. Now to kind of enhance that a little bit more, we're going to add that effect over top of the entire image. So we're going to go to our curves adjustment layer. I'm going to go over here to our green channel and I'm just going to pull our greens up just a bit. There we go. And pull our blues up. Now I don't want to do just blue because there was a little bit of green in there. So like a, almost like a teal color. Um, that's why we went to both our blue channel and our green channel. Okay, so now what we have is we started off with this. We added a little bit of color in there, just changed a little bit, added the saturation, and then basically brought that color into the whole image. So it really does look as though that light source, you can see it here especially in, you know, the subjects here on the left, it really does look as, lo as though it's lighting them just a little bit more um, than what we started with. So already really cool. Now you can work a lot with complementary colors on an image like this. Like if you're adding like blues and greens to the highlights, you can add warm colors into the shadows and it's going to create a really nice play. You can do that really easily um, a couple of ways. I'm actually going to do, I'm going to use a way that I pretty, I don't think I've ever showed before because it's um, just kind of not incredibly common, but I like showing you guys different ways to do things. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to choose uh, this dark kind of like orange color. There we go. And I'm going to fill my foreground with this color. So hold down Alt or Option, and that's going to fill with your foreground color. Okay, so we have this color, and now we're going to change this layer mode down to Lighten. Okay, and basically what this is going to do is anything that's actually lighter than this color, it's not going to show up. And anything that's darker than this color, it is going to show up. And this is a really great method for adding some color into your shadows. Now, it's not exactly what we want it to be just yet. Not a big deal. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Command U. And then we can actually change the color of this layer. So I can change maybe the lightness, just bring that down a little bit. I can bring up my saturation and I can even change my hue as we need to. There we go. And you can see this is just a really nice, easy way to bring some color into those shadows. Let's hit OK. And still kind of maintain quite a bit of control. So there's just kind of like the before and after of bringing that color. Maybe we'll just bring down our opacity just a little bit. So it's just warming up our shadows just a little bit, which is going to create a nicer contrast with the highlights in that like bluish green color. You could do a similar thing with curves or levels. I'll just show you guys how to do that as well. Here in curves, you could just grab like your green channel. Let's go down here and bring this up. Oh, sorry. I meant to grab the red channel. All right. Red channel. We'll click it over here and drag that up, which is going to add some reds into the shadows. And then maybe we'll go to the blue channel. There we go. And click and drag. Yep, you know, I want to go to the green channel again. I'm getting all confused today, but that's part of the fun of the learning process. There we go. Okay, so you can do the same thing by warming up your shadows just a little bit there as well. So either of these techniques, they're both just going to act a little bit differently, and you could even use them, I don't know, in conjunction with one another. I actually like this one a little bit more, so we're going to stick with that guy. 
just wanted to show you guys a couple different ways you can actually do things in Photoshop. All right. So we have our really nice light glow. I'm going to go ahead and enhance this just a little bit more. And um, what we're going to do is I'm going to create a new layer. So shift option command N and then shift option command E is going to make a stamp visible layer. And basically this just takes every layer you can see and puts it on a new layer. And we're going to put a, we're going to go down to filter and I'm going to go over here to render. We're going to put a lens flare on this. And lens flares are generally pretty tacky, but if you have a light source like this in your image, a lens flare is the perfect thing to do. I'm gonna show you guys how to enhance it, make it not as tacky. Um, basically, you can just move your lens flare anywhere you want, right over here. Um, you generally wanna put it right where your light source is. So I'm trying to put it right you know, in the center of this glowing ball. So we're gonna hit okay, and that's gonna put a lens flare like you know, right in the middle of that guy. Now, I like to be able to move my lens flare because it's just like, if it's stuck on this layer, then I can't, you know, I can't move just the lens filler. I can't change the color of it. I can't really do anything. So what I'm going to do now is just um, fill this layer with black. So I'm going to hit shift delete. I'm going to say contents use black and hit okay. Now we're going to go up to filter and I'm going to go down to lens flare and it's just going to apply the same lens flare that we'd used earlier. So it's just a black layer and with the same lens flare on there. And now we're going to change this layer blending mode down to screen. What's really cool is I can turn this lens flare on and off now because we're using a blending mode to get the lens flare there instead of having it actually visible on a layer. We can also do other cool things. I, I can hit Command U just like we did earlier with the, um, with the color for here and I can change the color of the lens flare. So let's say I want to pull it a little bit more towards the green, slot, green side and then it's actually going to work a little bit. You can see it's going to kind of help add to the dimension of our little glow thing there, which is totally cool. And then you get these other like cool lighting effects and artifacts. They just look, you know, to kind of sell the image a little bit more. All right, almost done. There's just a couple more things I want to do. I'm going to grab another curves adjustment layer. I, I really like adding a lot of depth to like glowing effects like this. I think it helps create the effect a little bit more. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pump up this green channel and on my layer mask, I'm going to hit command I, which is just going to invert that. And then I'm going to use my gradient tool and we're going to use the radial gradient going from the foreground to transparent. I'm going to hit okay. And then I'm going to click right in here and just drag out. Okay. And what that did is it just made a layer mask that looks like this, just a nice round area. And uh, the center of it is now green. Incredible, right? But it just does, it adds a little bit more effect to, to the overall thing. Okay. And then I'm going to show you guys a really cool way to make like a, J.J. Abrams type of <laughs> lens flare. If you guys have seen like Star Trek or things like that, you'll know J.J. Abrams loves lens flares and uh, they're just really fun. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my clone stamp tool. We've got a current and below sample here. So it's gonna sample basically everything. And I'm just gonna sample this area and kind of paint some of this, you know, over here. It really doesn't matter what kind of detail you have in here. We're just sampling like the lighter areas. That's our, that's our general goal here. Okay, so on a new layer, I've just sampled and I've painted this on it. And you're like, wow, that looks horrible, Aaron. Congratulations. Well, we're going to warp it and it's going to look great. So there. <laughs> to do that, just hit Command T and then you can just grab your corners here and kind of like warp these around. And there we go. So you get something like that. And these little details in here, they're actually going to look really nice because it's going gonna, it's gonna to make it not look like it was just painted in Photoshop. It's going to make it look a little more organic. Now you can change this from something to, from normal to down to like color dodge and um, let's just squish it up even more. There we go. Kind of play around with these. Isn't that a nice JJ Abrams like lens flare effect? It's like, wow, I'm on the set of Star Wars. Amazing. Um, so you could just do that over and over again. Like it doesn't, you can, you know, kind of move them around and things like that. Change your opacity. Um, color dodge works. Screen also works. A couple different, you know, cool blending modes and you can just kind of play around with your opacity there. So just a really cool effect. And you can see by using um, the clone stamp instead of a regular brush, you have like this, you know, nice color with the reds and just a little bit of variation here with that effect. It just kind of sells a little bit more. All right. And that is how to enhance a glowing ball of energy. Um, let's look at our before and after. So here's our before, very cool image. And the after we just drew a little bit more attention to the light orb and um, just use it to help kind of color the image just a little bit more. So really cool way to add a little bit more interest to something like this. If you guys have ever created a light orb, um, submit it in the comment down below. I would love to see it. And you guys can now JJ Abrams the mess out of those lens flares. <laughs> guys, thanks so much for watching Flirt. I hope you enjoy this episode. I'll flirt you later. Bye everyone.
Today's episode is brought to you by J.J. Abrams.